Hola Munchkin! It's been a while since I've done a video in English, so I thought it was time for me to do one because I have been to a screening of Paper Town since I did a review on about the Fault in Our Stars a year ago and now I had a chance to see the next film from John Green's book of which I'm a fan, a really big fan I thought I'd just review it in here because why not? I don't know how to describe the film because it was very good the actors were absolutely amazing they gave to the characters something personal, something incredible like I think we understood Margot a lot more thanks to how Cara de Lavigne portrayed her. I think she probably got Margot a lot more than I did and I didn't like her as a character. And I didn't like actually Quentin as well because he was just so over obsessed over this girl who didn't care that much about him and he couldn't see it. And I was like, I just wanted to shake him. I think Nat Wolf did a very, very, very good job with the character because it, it looked more human and less annoying. I really liked it and Radha was portrayed exactly as I wanted him. Ben was nicer, a lot nicer in the film. I found him incredibly annoying in the book. Angelus was very cute and it was all very well done. I think the actors were absolutely perfect for the role and that was amazing. The soundtrack was very very good and very unexpected. I didn't expect the film to have such like indie soundtracks. They were like so unknown and just you didn't even notice them that much. I loved the colouring, I loved the places they chose where the things were happening. I loved some shots were amazing, like the scene they have in the um, up in the tower when they're like talking about paper towns after the whole Marco with the spray and all the pranks and stuff. That scene where they're dancing and it's like dark and they're there are the, the two figures against the lights that are outside the tower and you can see the whole of the city and there's all the music and they're just like being dorks. That scene was so cute and so nice. And also something that's very hard to get in this sweet way was, you know when um, someone is being friend zoned and you, you, you can sense that. In this film, friend zone hurts you in a way that's so subtle and so bittersweet that I think they did a great job with that like the whole relationship between Margot and Quentin so I really loved the film, it was very well done, I enjoyed it but one thing, that's just my opinion but one thing I loved about the book was that I hated the characters but that the whole book got me so mad until the ending when he does realise that he's just been obsessed over something that wasn't worth it and that she didn't care he just kind of grows up like suddenly realising this big thing that was in front of him the whole way and everybody had tried to make him understand that he wasn't that important to her or at least not as much as she was to him and the moment when he realises that and when Margot is just like very straight forward with him it's just like sort of, oh well nice to see you, how are you, but I really don't care about you being here? Or sort of, like she was very mean at the ending, she was very selfish and like not very honest. But in the film, I'm not gonna spoil it, but things are a bit too happy and sweet and tender. I mean, I don't think you get the sort of very important realization that Quentin has at the ending with the ending being so subtle and not as straightforward as it was as it was in the book because I loved it in the book because like it was like a slap in the face like a punch in the stomach it was like fuck I didn't know this before it was in front of me all the time and I was just like over obsessed over this thing and I couldn't even see so obsessed that I couldn't see any it, it just resumes exactly how teenagers feel and and I think this thing is missing from the ending of the film. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the film, it just left me a bit like, okay, alright. But it was a very, very good film. I really liked it and I, I really want to see Looking for Alaska made into a film because it's my favourite of John Green's book. And it's been something. I, I really enjoyed seeing the film and I hope they're going to keep making films for his book because it's always nice to see the adaptation from one of your favourite books into reality. Like, well, reality film, okay. And I don't want to review it too much on the technical side because of course I would have to talk about the shots and 
I mean, I already talked about the coloring, that's very nice, and I, I think some shots were very, very good, I love them. Just, I would have done it differently, that's something, but I think that's normal on this side of the screen, I guess. Anyway, like, biggest congratulations to the actors and the people who made the film, and it was very good. Well, yeah, that's it. If you've seen it, or if you want to know more about the film, well, let me know in the comments below, let me know your favourite characters, favourite scene, what you expect from the film, what what you got when you saw the film, if you liked it, um, it's just going to be very interesting and I can't wait for you to actually tell me and just discuss about it. So, see you in the next video and hopefully you like this one and booyah! Annuncio in italiano, allora, per chiunque eh, sia arrivato alla fine del video, grazie, e il raduno è ufficiale a Firenze il primo di settembre alle 11 in stazione Santa Maria Novella davanti al McDonald in stazione e da lì poi si andrà in giro, saremo tutti assieme, magari suoneremo il chitarra, ci saranno delle attività che spiegherò a seguire, l'evento su Facebook è qua sotto nella descrizione, cliccate e mettete parteciperò se venite, portatevi il pranzo al sacco, sarà una cosa molto carina tutti quanti assieme, non vedo l'ora di vedervi tutti quanti e sì, ci vediamo lì e buia!